Hello folks, tonight I'm going after SH2-112. <laughs> you, you know pickings are slim when I'm, I'm resorting to this kind of object. It, it doesn't even have a New Galactic catalog name. Or maybe it does and I just don't know what it is. Um, I'm, I'm going to be doing probably only um, HA and Oxygen. I, I didn't like the way the, the Hubble palette necessarily looked on this one. Uh, right now I'm doing HA, but I'll add in my oxygen. Um, I'm probably only going to do two minutes of oxygen. I'll just put that in here now. Two minutes. And I'll do, ooh, I didn't mean to put 180 there. I'll make 60 there. And I'm not sure how many to do here. Maybe I'll do 90 there. But my mean readout is 484, which is rather low, but you know what? I've been going with it for a while. I like it closer to the between 700 and 1,000, but I think I can get away with it. Now let's take a look at what one raw image looks like right now. Okay, it's not terribly big. Uh, it's, it's, it looks like a ball kind of structure, and it's not a very detailed object either, so I'll, I'll have to see what it looks like after I stack a few. Now let's take a look at my guiding while I'm here. Oh, I did a dither over there. It looks like it took a while to recover. Uh, I threw off my tote RMS here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's see what my tote RMS here is now. 0 0.72, 0 0.77. Um, not looking great right now, but um, I think as the night gets a little darker and the scope guide's a little bit higher, uh, the guiding will usually improve, and it will improve by a lot. You know, I'm, I'm sure it's going to drop below 0 0.60. It'll probably end up somewhere in the 0.5 range. So, um, that's all I got for now. So, I'm going to stack if you, and I'll be back later. See you later. Okay, so I have stacked a little over two hours of data so far. That's 44 frames at three minutes. That's about two hours and 12 minutes, and I did a little processing just to see what it looks like. Um, and it looks pretty good. I use Deep Sky Stacker so I can get a quick stack, but I'll do the final stacking in Pix and Sight. So that, uh... I mean, there's not a lot of features with this little fuzzball, but it's different. I mean, it's it, it hasn't been done that much, so it's we'll see how it looks at the end. Like I said, I think I'm going to just do the HA and oxygen. I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish tonight, because this object gets pretty low in the west at around 3 a.m., and low in the west is too close to my neighbor's very bright backyard light, so I think I'm going to stop at around 3 a.m. and I'll have to find some other object to, to go to. Uh, I got three more hours of dark time I don't want to waste. So I'm thinking maybe I'll do the core of the heart nebula. Uh, this is a big scope. I won't be able to get all of the heart, but the, the core of it, the heart of the heart, looks pretty interesting. So maybe I'll do that. I'll see. Okay, I'll see you later. Hey, I am back. A few days have passed, and I finally got around to processing this object. You know, since I posted that last video, my 35-day Astro Odyssey, where I captured all of those deep sky objects in a short period of time, we have still had nothing but clear skies. I, I can't even keep up anymore. I So I finally got around to processing this object, and you'll, you'll see another video in probably even a few days. I Now I'm working on the Heart and Soul Nebula, trying to do a four-panel mosaic on that. And then I did yet another video, which you probably, which will never see the light of day. I was trying to simulate diffraction spikes with dental floss. And the spikes worked, except it shifted. The spike shifted, and I don't think it's because the dental floss moved. I think it's because I have flexure going on somewhere. I think my entire telescope might have rotated. I'm not sure on that, but I got some issues to to work out with that. But anyway, back to back to this one. Um, this is how HA looks. Three hours of HA. HA usually comes up strong, but you'll see the oxygen. Oh, not very much at all. Not, not looking so great there. And this is an object that really needs a lot more than two and a half hours of oxygen. Um, and so you really have to, like I say, you, you have to get into a fist fight with the data to make this work. And uh, this is what I came up with. Uh, brace yourself, you might need sunglasses. 
boom. <laughs> so it's, um, I don't know, some people think I, I tend to oversaturate my nebulas. Uh, and and they're probably right in this case, and sometimes they look oversaturated because, well, a lot of times I'm not capturing enough data and I try to compensate. And I really went to town on that core. Uh, I don't know. The, uh, it, it was really mostly showing up red and a little bit of light red. And I really went to town trying to liven it up a little bit. Does it look natural? I don't know. But you know what? When you do a narrow band, you sort of have a free license. Some people might like it. Other people might not like it. So that's what I came up with. And I came up with so many iterations, I just don't have any more energy to come up with yet another iteration to see if I like that better. But uh, it makes for a pretty cool screensaver. I kind of like the screensaver part. Um, anyway... That's what I got. Uh, thanks for watching. It's kind of a cool object. If you want to go after it, it's still out there, pretty high in the sky. Okay, see you later.